This episode of Hawk Talk is brought to you by Charbonneau Car Center and Dakota Bank. Hi, and welcome back to this week's edition of Hawk Talk. I'm Coulter Hickok, and I'm joined here by not so much of a brand new guest. You were telling me that you were on last semester. I kind of forgot about it, but please <laughs> reintroduce yourself, who you are, where you're from, and what do you do here at DSU? All right, so my name is Haley Oberlander, and I'm from Warden, Montana. Um, I'm a junior here at DSU. Um, I'm on Student Ambassador, Student Senate, and a part of the Theodore Roosevelt Honors Leadership Program. You're running a whole lot of operations over at DSU. So I got to ask you, this is going to come into a later question, but uh, cross country in the fall and track in the spring, how has your body just not collapsed yet? That's such a great question, Golder. Um, it's really difficult because obviously for cross country, you have to train during the summer. And so it's a, it's a year long thing. It's a year long sport and it's that dedication. And our team really keeps, our tight knit team keeps us the, gives us the motivation and keeps us in line. What goes into the transitioning period between cross country and track? So it's actually just a week. We get a week off. Um, so we, the girls made it to nationals this year, which meant um, like the Thanksgiving week we got off. And so when we got back to school after Thanksgiving, it, we started indoor practices, which meant treads. And yeah, I mean, ever since December, we've been getting ready for indoor track and then uh, it'll just transition over right from indoor to outdoor. Super, super busy. So you, as you just previously stated, all of the clubs and organizations you are a part of for DSU, do you have any free time whatsoever? I am definitely very busy. I have been asked like, um, what, like, where, when do you have time to do homework, you know? But it's actually really nice because I like staying involved in actually student ambassadors, student senate, and TR, like we all work together. So it's like a triangle. So, I mean, the information that I'm getting from one group is we're all collaborating and kind of just getting involved with the university. So it's really enjoyable to get an understanding from different points of views. So I don't have the most free time, but you, you got to make time for it. I mean, I should probably learn from you about making free time. I mean, I myself kind of busy. You seem way more busier than me, but yet you still have managed to make your free time. So props to you. Thanks. <laughs> so in your long, illustrious career in between high school and now college uh, track and cross country, uh, is there a particular place that just like has a special place in your heart to go run at? Oh yeah, I, I think my favorite place would be at our DSU home meet. Uh, for cross country. That one just, it seems to be our favorite. Like we, it's our home course and it's a flat course and everyone runs so well. So I think I like that one because when we're finished with our running, everyone's so excited because there's PRs and there's just a lot of, a lot of excitement. So you wanna give us a little bit of a recap of the season kind of so far for the indoor season? Yeah, so for indoor, we've had a lot, a lot, a lot of people qualifying for nationals, A standard and B standard, which is really great. Um, and then we have conference this weekend. So just trying to wrap up indoor, it's a super, super, super short season, which um, is why we start in December. But um, yeah, so the girls, the girls and boys are all are gonna have to work for it. The girls kind of have a little bit better of a chance of winning conference, but the boys, um, you gotta work for it and stuff like that. It, nothing's ever handed to you. We kind of learned that my freshman year at cross country season when we tied with Dakota State. So like nothing's really ever handed to you. You gotta work for it. I mean, you guys as the women's team, you guys have had a lot of success. Uh, how many conference championships do you, does the women team have right now? Oh, uh, are you talking about for cross country? Uh, or is indoor? it cross country or am I thinking track? Oh uh, gosh, we, I couldn't even tell you how many there's go and walk into coach Whitcop's office and you will just see lines of trophies, just like coach Stanton's office. Yeah. He's definitely won a lot of conference championships with cross indoor and outdoor boys and girls. That's why Co Coach Shane Whitcock, friend of the show, is a lot a lot of the time coach of the year for the North Star. Absolutely. Yeah, he won it for um, cross country. So 
we're excited and hopefully we can give him that as for um, both indoor and outdoor track as well. Let's knock on wood right there. <laughs> yep. Uh, so you've been on the show. You we you know we ask fun questions around here. Absolutely. So you were very excited about this one. Uh, it is known by a lot of DSU students that your wiener dog Willie, who also has an Instagram, mm -hmm. if you want to plug that, you can. Uh, 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 your wiener dog Willie. Uh, when is Coach Shane Whitcock gonna give him a scholarship to Gosh. compete for the Hawks? No kidding. Um, so. Willie, he doesn't really come to our cross country track practices. He's always up in the TR office with me. He was up there this morning for two hours, but so just to make it clear, Willie is a wiener dog of mine and he is um, a dappled. He doesn't run the best just because of his little short legs, but um, definitely think that he should become the cross country and track mascot and get a scholarship, but. I mean, you said it. I think it has to be so right now. <laughs> so I know we're going to put this up on Twitter and then pretty much I believe that the coach for Shane Whitcup, he'll tweet this out on the DSU track and field and cross country Twitter page. So then maybe, maybe it might work out. Give us some likes <laughs> so we, we can make sure Willie gets out there. Uh, that was me trying to say what I wanted to say before <laughs> I could actually think of what I was trying to say. Uh, so do you have any pre-race traditions? Um, pre-race traditions. I think for me, it's just going to be more like getting together as a team, warming up as a team. Um, ever since high school, my favorite is just doing things as a team, gather like gathering our thoughts as a team, becoming positive together, getting rid of those negative attitudes and kind of just going in there with a happy thought, happy mindset. So not really any traditions, but yeah. Any music you like to play before you go run? I like to play I'm the Champion by Carrie Underwood. How about it, like, <laughs> what about eating? Like, I feel like if I were to run, which is going to be really bad, uh, if I were to ever run in cross country, I don't know what I would eat because I feel like I would throw up constantly. Yeah, I think a lot of us eat oatmeal for breakfast. A lot of us cross runners, distance runners, uh, eat oatmeal. We eat the hotel out of oatmeal in the mornings for before meets. I feel like just because you guys travel so much, you guys are very well acquainted with all of the hotels that are around the surrounding area. Absolutely. So conference is coming back up in Brookings, South Dakota. Correct. You guys were just previously there last week. So do you by now know what the course is actually like? I actually haven't been there since my freshman year because I didn't go last weekend. Okay. But um, I mean, it's a 300 meter track, which is really nice. Um, per, for me, for distance runners, it's really nice because um, it's not as many laps. I mean, 200 meter track running 16 laps for the 3K, that, that kind of gets a lot. <laughs> so it's, a little, it's less than that. But uh, yeah, a lot of them now know what that uh, track looks like, ready to compete. And a lot of them had PRs on that track last weekend. So it'll be Galen, great. I know Galen Brantley, who we just had on previously, he just qualified for B standard. Yes. So, I mean, congrats to him. Yep, and Elise is running great, and Dane is jumping super well. So there's a lot of a lot of successes happening. And then correct me if I'm wrong, they also qualified for A standard? I'm pretty sure. A or B? I'm, I, don't, I don't know for sure. I would tell you the difference, but honestly, I don't know what the difference <laughs> is. Uh, there's different qualifying marks that need to be met to met to meet the national standard. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what that means, but uh, maybe I'll find out and report on it later. <laughs> um, so then, I'm trying to read where I was at. How are you guys preparing for the conference meet? Yeah, so this week's, I mean, starting on Monday, we started tapering. So last, pretty much our last hard week, uh, and now, we're kind of just getting into easier workouts this week and kind of giving our legs a break. We, no one, I don't think, lifted this week just so we're not sore. And um, Coach Whitcop is making sure all of us are taking care of our bodies and staying healthy, getting enough sleep, uh, going to bed early because he's been making us all get up early because conference is starting early. So early. When are you guys leaving? We leave Saturday at 10 a.m crazy yep yep so it's a sunday meet well kaylee we ask this to everybody who comes on the show but i gotta ask you you made 
you've already answered this question before in your previous interview, but I got to ask you again, what does DSU mean to you? Yeah, so DSU means um, getting out of your comfort zone, taking a step in the right direction. There's so many opportunities on campus for you to grow and develop those communication skills and find yourself. I think DSU serves so many opportunities. You just have to take that next step into following your dreams and seeing where you could go. Now, if I were you, I would use that clip specifically just so you can recruit more TR students. <laughs> that's just me because that's a great answer. Thank well, you. Haley, thank you very much for coming on and good luck this weekend to awesome. all the Hawks competing at uh, conference meet this week. Absolutely, thank you so much, Coulter. Absolutely, we'll be right back with a familiar face right after this. And we're back. As I did say, we have a familiar face around here, but will you please <laughs> introduce yourself again? Who are you, where are you from, and what do you do here at DSU? Yeah, so my name is Kiara Schneider. Um, I'm from Dickinson, North Dakota, and I do lots of things at Dickinson State. Um, I'm on the competitive and sideline cheerleading teams. I work at the Heritage Foundation. I'm a co-host on Hawk Talk. Um, I'm involved in Student Senate and being involved in as many committees and things that I can be. Uh, so, right, as you said, you're here for the cheer team. Uh, talk us through the season so far. I know you guys have just had a really short season so far, but just talk us through it. Yeah, so our season actually starts in April. So it started in April of 2021 for what we're working towards now. So we work towards the summer and um, getting those skills up. Our sideline season is really dedicated towards making sure that we're building our strength and being able to get those skills for our competitive season. Our competitive season starts in November. But our first competition isn't until usually early February, late January. So is it, I've read this and you shared a picture with me, is it still true that your last competition, the Hawks were ranked number one, now leading to being the number one team in the North Star? Or not just the North Star, <laughs> the whole NAIA? Oh my gosh, yes, it was such a surreal moment. Um, going back to the locker room, we hit, I think, a, a 92 point, four or five was our score and it was the leading score in the nation and on top of that even with our average of our last score being i think it was like an 84 or 86 we ended up being ranked number one in the entire nation now we're ranked number four which is still i mean amazing we're so thankful and jaw dropping moments still but yeah that was so you've been with the team since it was created, the competitive team. So how have you seen the competitive cheer team change over the years? Yes, um, definitely changed in numbers, definitely changed in strength. I think our biggest change from the very beginning, my freshman year, four years ago, is the mindset of the athletes. We're there to work. Everybody is going to do what it takes to make sure that we're su successful as a team. So. That's definitely been a, a good change. It's been refreshing. And then you also have said that you are at the foundation along with me, but you just recently acquired a new job. Uh, you want to tell us what you're doing now? Yeah, um, I'm not quite sure what the exact title is, so I'm not going to say that, but um, I'm getting to do some work more on the alumni side, which I really, really, really like. Um, just getting to meet people and know people. And right now we're in the middle of forming a, a committee. So um, just doing that. And then I, I got to go on the Phoenix golf trip this year which was a really great experience I met so many great people and it was just amazing so <laughs> I mean that was my next question honestly yeah. <laughs> I was just gonna ask how was it Arizona it was amazing um, I got to speak in front of our alumni and friends on I think it was Tuesday night after our golf scramble um, leading into that social so it was definitely nerve-wracking but it was also really fun. It, like I said, it was great meeting all of the people and um, all those people who have been great mentors to me, Ty and Kyle, Myra and Pam, um, Amanda and other people. They were there supporting or there in spirits. So it, that was, it was good. Did you get a nice tan while you were down there? I didn't actually. <laughs> it was weird. Um, surprisingly, I, I spent more time in the hotel room than I thought I would, but it was still fun. Hey, you know, 
that's okay too. Yeah. <laughs> so back to cheer, you are the lone senior on the team. And um, how has it been to see the cheerleaders who are brand new, like kind of grow up right before your eyes? Yeah. I mean, getting too much into it makes me feel kind of emotional because I've gotten to spend this time with a lot of the athletes on the team are veterans of the high school program. So I've really gotten to just watch them grow up all the way from being freshmen in high school, 14 years old, up to now they're like 19. So just that growth has been amazing at the maturity, getting watch, getting to watch them evolve into the athletes they are today, the people they are today. And along with that, obviously cheerleading has always been really near and dear, close to my heart for a lot of reasons. but. It's, it's been my life since I've been 12 years old and now I'm going on 22. So yeah, it's it's been the biggest part of who I am and the journey coming to a close has been really hard for me to grapple with, but also I feel like like it's it's about that time, so. Man, you're gonna make me cry. <laughs> yeah, it's, tonight will be, it'll be a tough one for me and hopefully I'm not too much of a baby. <laughs> Hey, you know what? We'll bring extra tissues. I'm going to be announcing, so it'll be a lot of fun for me to kind of see you and announce your biography tonight. Yeah, but thank uh, you. yeah, I'm excited that I get to watch the Hawks tonight and yeah. compete against Waldorf, the only other team in our conference, well, yeah. part of us, and then St. Mary. Where yeah. exactly is St. Mary? Ooh. I, I'm gonna guess some say somewhere in Nebraska maybe. I'm sorry for all the St. Mary people <laughs> if if you're not, but it's kind of funny we're actually joking about tonight being like the unspoken conference championship because North Star has Waldorf and it has Dickinson State and tonight we're going head to head. So, but not only we'll do you get a, you not only get to compete against them tonight, you could also get to compete against them in your triangular this weekend. Yes, I think I think that is correct. I wrote that down in the recap later. So so I hope that I read that right. Oh, I'm really proud of you. Good job. <laughs> so it's Go Waldorf closer. and Doan. You guys will do a triangular in Seward, Nebraska. Yeah, I think um, somewhere in there is Concordia too. Concordia, I believe, was the competition right before the triangular. Yep, yep, so. So, Kiera, we asked this to all of our seniors who come on this show. <laughs> right, if you could tell your freshman self one thing, what would it be? Wow, oh, I wish I, wish I would have been more prepared for that. I probably should have given you these no, questions you're right good. before. You're good. Um, I think the biggest piece of advice that I would give my freshman self is to be patient and just to enjoy the moments because they don't last very long and just to be thankful for the relationships because I definitely will cherish them for the rest of my life. It's a great senior answer. <laughs> I mean, I enjoy, ho hopefully I'm going to graduate sometimes, so then you have to, don't don't have to keep seeing my face. Sorry, my no. mouth got there. No, but, we would uh, love to keep seeing you. Uh, probably not. <laughs> but uh, so what are your future plans for um, after graduating? Um, I don't have a definitive answer. I know that I'm happy where I am now, and I'm really thankful for the opportunities that I've been allowed. And I plan to just keep working hard and just to be successful somewhere. So that's my goal. <laughs> you know, what a, what a great goal to have. And then lastly, you've asked, or you've asked this question, we've asked you this question, but I just love asking every time I get to yeah. see it, what does DSU mean to you? I think my answer of what DSU means to me has definitely changed over the years. But right now I would say DSU means to me is family because coming here to, to university from the same town that I grew up in, it was, it was strange, but it definitely felt comfortable. But throughout the years, I've developed a new definition of what DSU means. And it means family because of the relationships that I've acquired over the years and the people I've been able to meet and the friendships that I've built. And it, it just means everything to me at this point. It's my life, it's, it's what I spend every single day of my life working towards and doing. So DSU is family. I mean, I love hearing all of the answers. I bet I imagine that you love hearing all the answers. Yes. So it's just DSU is a family. Yes. That's no other way to say it. DSU is a big family. So mm -hmm. Kira, thank you very much for coming on. Thank you very much for what you have done for the school, what you will continue to do for the school. It's been awesome to work with you at the foundation and here. So thank you very Thanks, much. Homie.
Appreciate it. If you want to stay, we'll be right back with the recap right after this. <laughs> Hawks are up, yo. <laughs> And welcome back for the recap. Unfortunately, Kiera had to go do some prehab before the cheer competition. So let's get right into it. Basketball, Hawks went to Dakota State and Bellevue over the weekend. They went to Dakota State first on Friday and then headed to Bellevue, Nebraska on Saturday. Let's head with Friday first. The men lost in overtime 68 to 66 in a nail biter against Dakota State, the Trojans. And the women, unfortunately, also lost 69 to 49. Now, on Saturday, uh, both teams went over to Bellevue, Nebraska. The men lost 79 to 48, and the women lost 72 to 65. Both teams are then going to head to Valley City on Friday to compete against the Vikings. Right now, I know the women are number three in the conference, and Valley is number seven, so our chances for a home women's playoff game are looking very high for the Blue Hawks. Softball, we're finally in softball season. Well, they went to Aberdeen, South Dakota, played four games total, two on Friday, two on Saturday. Friday, they went one and one, winning over St. Mary three to two and losing to Northern State, which is in Aberdeen, uh, five to one. Um, then on Saturday, uh, went one and one again, winning over Dort two to one and losing to Jamestown in a nail biter of a five to four. Hawks will then be back in Aberdeen, South Dakota to play another four games. And I know Jamestown's one of the teams, so maybe Hawks get a little redemption right there. Track, we want to thank Haley for coming on, and we really want to wish all of the track athletes who are going to compete in conference this weekend good luck. So both teams went to Brookings, as we said last week. Uh, the men placed 12th out of 14 teams, and the women took 17th over or 17th of 19 teams. Uh, like we said, they will be in the conference meet this weekend in Brookings, South Dakota. Nationals will also be in Brookings, South Dakota, so the Hawks are going to get very familiar going down to Brookings. Then cheer. Thanks for Kiera for coming on and all she does for Hawk Talk. Uh, the Hawks have two competitions this week uh, versus Waldorf and St. Mary in Scott Gym. If you're not able to watch current in Scott Gym, you can be sure to watch the replay of it on the Blue Hawk Athletics website or the Blue Hawks Athletic YouTube channel. Got that? <laughs> uh, that'll also be on the DSU Blue Hawk site as well. Uh, the, we're going to honor Kiera Schneider as she is the lone senior on the team. That's why we interviewed her. If you didn't pick up on that, that's why. Uh, then the, over the weekend, they are going to be headed to Seward, Nebraska to compete against Concordia, Waldorf, and Dome. So we just want to wish all of the Blue Hawks who are competing this week good luck from Hawk Talk. You can make sure to follow us on our social media pages at DSU Heritage Fund on Twitter and on Instagram at DSU Foundation. Thank you to sponsors. Thank you to fans. Thank you from myself, Kiera, Hillary, and Gunner. Thank you to the Foundation, Consolidated Channel 18. Catch you next week. But until then, Hawks are up.